Hello everyone, I am Indurok, and today I am playing The Last Door Chapter 2, Memories. So, yeah. As I had said in my first video, I ha in, my, uh, in the first game, I <clears throat> had already played the first, second, and third games. So I know it's going to happen in those. But I, but I don't know if the fourth game is out yet, but I'm not going to try to find out yet until I've finished playing the third game for you guys. So, all right, so let's begin. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, right, whatever. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> Give us each day our daily bread. <laughs> this looks friendly. Forgive us our sins, for we forgive them, for we ourselves forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Now tell me, where are you? What do you see? Who is it? Is it him, Anthony? Answer me. <coughs> what is she doing? Get close to her. Get close to Anna. When I count to three, you'll wake up. One. Two. Three. Now, wake up. Wake up. You can rest now, Mr. Devitt. That'll be enough for today. Are these sessions really necessary? I am confident that this is the best course of treatment for your symptoms. Did you ever see him again? I saw it. What did you see? Can you describe it? It was like an eye. Perfectly rounded and dark. Deep and empty. Accompanied by the most horrifying, pain-filled screams I've ever heard. Inside, a complete darkness wherein evil dwells deep below. A forgotten fear for human reasoning, but undoubtedly still rests deep 
down inside our being. In my case, that fear has already awoken. I can understand why you were disturbed, Mr. Devitt. With your permission, I would like to consult on your case with a colleague of mine, a man I've known for many years who is more versed in modern psychological practices. I think his knowledge and experience would be very helpful in enabling us to understand your condition. <clears throat> if you think it would help, Doctor, I leave it in your hands. The agony grows increasingly unbearable. And if you believe this man can help, then I welcome his aid. Thank you, Dr. Wakefield. I bid you good evening. Anthony, my friend, what really happened to you? How could you have let your wife Anna die so awfully? These doubts consume my soul. I hardly remember the time we spent together as schoolmates. I confess that beyond your enduring friendship, I can recall little of those years. Were your words a result of an increasing loss of sanity? In your letter, you wrote that someone awaits me. A warning to ward me from some genuine danger, or merely the ravings of a brilliant mind, addled by insanity? Something stirs uneasily within my heart. I will not rest easily again until... I go back to that boarding school and find out what secrets may lie within. Farewell, Mr. and Mrs. Beath Beechworth. Rest now in peace. Chapter 2. Memories. Okay. <clears throat> the Angel Gabriel. The school's emblem. I remember it being very pristine, but it looks neglected and dirty now. Stone Eagle lies on the floor. It appears to have broken off the fountain. Let's take a look over here before going in there. The door is locked from the other side. A locked wooden coffin, badly finished. Seems whoever made it was a bit rushed to finish. Good evening. I hope you're right, and this indeed be a good evening. My name is Devitt. I didn't know there was a cemetery here. My pleasure, Mr. Devitt. I'm Frank Baldwin. Don't ask me why. But the... But the Monkey Doodle, I don't know how to say that word, so I'll just say it like that. Specifically ordered us, ordered to bury the, bo the corpses here. Did he order you to bury corpses here? Why? I don't understand. What's there to understand, Mr. David? God has forsaken this place. Uh, don't you know? Here we take care of patients. I'm an old... Uh... Al alumnus? Al alumnus? How do you say that? I have no idea. There's so many words in this game I don't know. I used to attend the school. It has been a long time since... This is... Sorry, hang on. I'll start over. It's been a long time since this has not been a boarding school anymore. The building is now 
used as a nursing home run by the nuns. A former student, eh? I never heard it. I never heard anybody in the village speak so fondly of the school. They say it closed over. They say closed overnight, though nobody knows why. Not a lot was known about it. Excuse the interruption, Mr. Baldwin. I'll leave you with your work. Have a nice evening. Uh, blah, 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 David. This small group of graves has been haphazardly arranged. Piece of old fishing net. Now I believe I could just say this but like that guy is actually I think he's supposed to be Scottish. Many years adrift have perfectly smoothed this flotsam into a small log. Let me take it. The lost pilgrim, a sea stack, older students at the school used to climb. Somewhere up there are my initials. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, wait, what? The cliff somehow looks very inviting. I wonder how many poor souls have jumped from it. Oh, ah, uh, well that's quite the thought. <clears throat> A grave recently dug. Recently, Doug, what the hell's wrong with you? It's being Doug, you monkey doodle. These rooms are private. Oh, good. Pardon. Excuse me, sister. Good evening, sister. Good evening. I am Mother Elizabeth. What brings you here, Mr... Devitt. I'm a former student at this of this boarding school. As you can see, Mr. Devitt, this stopped being an academic institution a long time ago, and is now exclusively dedicated to prayer and the well-being of the patients under our care. I see. Even so, may I please speak to... Mr. Devitt, I'm afraid that we are too busy to start wasting time talking about past issues. In addition, there is little to say. We sisters arrived after the boarding school had closed down. Everybody but... Monkey Doodle, of course. Monkey Doodle. Unless someone can... Like, give me a pronunciation of that. I am sticking with that. I am sticking with it. Exactly, but you didn't answer my question. Why have you come to this place, Mr. Devitt? I guess that it would be a good idea to visit this place again and perceive the, pa the passage of time. Perceive the passage of time? What are you talking about? This place will help me remember my past. If you have memory problems, I would recommend you visit a doctor immediately and don't waste your time here. To be honest, I prefer not to talk about it. I couldn't tell you why this place is so important to me, but it is a lot. Well, I appreciate your honesty, Mr. Devitt. I'll allow you to stay around here. I hope I won't regret my decision. Don't worry, Mother. Thank you. Huge wooden crucifix. Watch the door. You you mean watches the door? Well, then again, you are not allowed to get in there. Well, pfft. well, I mean, the people who made this apparently are not like English. Apparently, the Spanish people. If I if I'm right, yeah. Picture of Saint. I'm not even going to try. 
patron saint of the sick, hospitals, and nurses. He seems to have forsaken this place. Some bandages and other medical equipment. Nothing of interest. Doctor. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not a doctor. Pay him no mind. He's been delirious for some days. I'm Miss Mary Vinge, and this is my brother, Matthew. Juliet. <laughs> Why have you left me? Why don't you answer my letters? <laughs> my letters. You see, this poor man is still obsessed with his wife. He won't accept the fact that she left him months ago. My poor Matthew. I'm very sorry, Mrs. Vinge. I hope he recovers. Thank you. Among the baggages, I see a packet of letters bound by time. I'd ask you not to touch my belongings, please. You're not aware of who you were talking to. I'm sorry. A bunch of medical reports. Photographs of people, most likely family and friends of this bed's previous resident. Oh wait, first, actually, I'm going to go get something. An old, quite damaged mailbox. There's a postcard inside the mailbox. Dear Matthew, it has been several months and I still have heard no news from you. My brother insists that you have abandoned me, but I am sure you, that you remain true. I know you would never do that to me, for I know your heart and the honesty of your heart. I got this address from a hospital in London and pray that it reaches you safely. If that's the case, I want you to know that I will be that I will be always waiting for you. Forever yours, Juliet Holloway. Mr. Vinge, I think this letter is addressed to you. Oh, thank you. Leave it to me, if you'd be so kind. As you can see, my brother is too weak to read it. Well, Matthew, let's see who has written to you. Oh, it's a letter from our mother. Dear Matthew, I hope you are recovering. I wish that... your beloved sister and you come back home soon. My letters, all the letters I wrote to dear Juliet, you never posted them. But why, Mary? Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> How could you be so cruel? I had to do it, Matthew. You refuse to see how inappropriate a match she is for you. Her only interest is in marrying someone of your status, of our family's status. It was for your sake I did this. I did it to protect you from that woman's treachery. No. You only thought about yourself, of your vanity. I can't bear to look upon you anymore, Mary. Leave me be. From this day forth, you are no sister of mine. You dare banish me? I, who have stayed by your side all through your illness? Very well, Matthew. You will have your way. I will leave you, and then you will see how very alone you are. Farewell, brother. Thanks be to the Lord that you came to reveal my sister's cruelty, sir. Please, take this coin as a token of my appreciation. It's my lucky coin. 
though I hope it serve you better than it has myself. Well, thanks you very much. It seems that there is still hope to bring my wife back. A magazine entitled Weird Tales. What happened to you? Are you alright? There was a rhythmic sound. A rhythmic sound. Like breathing. But when? Last night I, I felt an increasing pressure on my temples. Something dry and rough like tree bark brushed against my leg. I saw something on the wall. Like a growing shadow. I lit the lamp and there was nothing. Madam. The poor woman has fallen into an uneasy, fitful sleep. He is quite a pale young boy. He is asleep. There are several crucifixes all together at the headboard of his bed. Why? Please. Someone. Uh, I don't even know that word. I'm sorry, you cannot be here. Is there some way I can help? Don't worry about it, sir. The Lord looks after each and every one of our patients. He will provide you with all the help you need. If you wish, you can pray there next to the statue of Our Lady. Don't you think she's beautiful? The Virgin listens to those in need. Mm-hmm. A gloomy statue of the Virgin Mary takes this place, makes this place even more mournful, if that is possible. A picture of the Virgin Mary gazing at you, supposedly to portray a sympathy and compassion for you. However, she seems to look more pained and sorrowful here. I'm just gonna open this door, it just goes out back to where the guy was. No. I go this way. Boop. I remember that we used to keep here some textbooks. Now there is a music box. Dear brother, I have reason I have received your letter, and I'll try to write you more frequently. I hope you are studying a lot and you feel comfortable there. We miss you a lot. When are you coming back? Father is in bed with fever, and I do not feel very well, but I am on medication. Wow, that music. Today it is my birthday, and I am feeling blue. It is a quiet and boring Sunday at the village. Mum is going to cook a lemon cake, as those that Grandma used to make. I wish we could eat it together. Right back soon. I'm looking forward to knowing how you're doing, what you're learning, how, how is it in, how is Scotland and so on, I mean. A big hug. I think about you a lot, your dear sister. There's an old sentence written on the board. In death there is hope. In death there is life. One must seek its true nature to understand the nothing. It looks like it's been there for years, as the chalk has faded in some places. Uh-huh. Right. The books on these shelves are old and musty. Theology is a dominant subject. Now let's look at all these. January 15th, 1876. Father Ernest seems un seemed unusually troubled today. Several times he paused abruptly in the middle of a lecture for no reason. Even during his favorite class, theology. January 18th. Today, Father Ernest was very irritable. Collins made a comment and was expelled from class for it. Even Devitt was, was admonished just for reading a philosophy book. 
I hope Father Ernest doesn't turn his ire towards me. My father will be disappointed if I fail to get good marks. January 21st. It was very disconcerting to see Father Ernest entering class so pale and sweaty. In the middle of his lecture, he stumbled, dazed, and had to sit. Father, January 20, 22nd. Father Ernest taught our theology class today. Even though he doesn't know the subject matter as well as... Wait, Father Eugene! Ah, I am... Okay. Even though he, was, he didn't know the subject matter as well as Father Ernest. When we asked him what happened to Father Ernest... Father Eugene told us that he had taken ill. What worries me is that now Father Eugene is also starting to look unwell. It has been a month since we last saw Father Ernest. We were, we're told that he's still sick, but if he's so ill, then why hasn't a physician come to treat him? My studies are flagging, but I have taken it upon myself to read on my own. I hope this helps as I must succeed in spite of the problems happening around us. It was announced this morning that the school is to close. None of us know why, and we can't get a straight answer from the, from the faculty. They each dodge the question, and I'm starting to think they may not know the answer themselves. Their anxiety is palpable, though they try to hide it behind a calm face. What about... But what about Father Ernest? I hear he is alone to remain after we vacate the premises. There is a picture in the diary. I believe that my character is the third from the left. The third character from the left, I think, is Devitt, so... All right, it's a photograph of my graduating class. I see myself, Father Ernest, and Anthony. I don't remember the names of the others. One face has been completely scratched out. Well, that's great. Okay, let's get out of here. Okay, well, actually, I'm going to end the uh, video here, so, uh, yeah, I'll continue later on. So, yeah. And we... So that's the end of this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.